Well, it was a move we were waiting for. Alabama left tackle Evan Neal announcing that he will enter the 2022 NFL Draft. Six foot seven, 350 pounds. Neal has improved every season for the Crimson Tide. The junior started every game at left tackle for Bama in 2021, protecting that blind side of Heisman winner Bryce Young. The consensus first team All-American selection this season as we take a look at Ryan Wilson's mock draft. We see Evan Neal there at number four in his latest mock. Neal, the highest rated offensive tackle in the CBS Sports 2022 NFL Draft prospect ranking and the number six player overall. Well, let's welcome in Ryan Wilson himself, looking at five players who could go number one. But before we get to those names, talk to me a little bit about how new coaching staffs can impact these top players. Three of the top five teams going to be hiring new coaches this season. There's a lot of different philosophies out there, focusing on defense, build up the offense. So how does it affect it all? Well, the push has been towards offense in recent years, of course, Jenny, and I say that with the understanding that the Chargers hired Brandon Staley, a defensive guy last year, and had a lot of success on the offensive side of the ball. We just heard Tommy mention Gerard Mayo, uh, who coaches the linebackers for New England, as being the favorite uh, for that Texas job. So this will be interesting to see how this plays out. Historically, we hear the names of Josh McDaniels, Byron Leftwich, the Eric Bieniemy, the offensive-minded uh, assistant coaches as possibly in the running uh, for some of these open jobs. But it's worth considering that defensive guys actually – uh, have gotten their foot in the door. Not only that, had success. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, the seven jobs that are now open, four were all de- former defensive guys. Uh, two were offensive guys, if you want to include Urban Meyer, and one was a special teams guy in Joe Judge. So it could go any number of ways. The push has been historically towards offense, but that doesn't mean a defensive guy can't emerge. A guy like Brandon Staley last year or Gerard Mayo is a name to keep an eye on as we move through the process this year. All right, let's get to the players now. Now, the best available alignment out there could go number one overall, obviously. Why would a player like Alabama's Evan Neal secure that number one pick? Uh, because Shad Khan, the owner of the Jaguars, spent a lot of Sundays watching Trevor Lawrence pick himself up off the grass uh, because he had trouble being protected. And, and that's just the reality of it. Is Evan Neal the number one overall pick in terms of where I have my players ranked? No, he's not. He, he's top ten without question. Uh, but Cam Robinson, their left tackle, his contract is up. Two other offensive linemen's contracts are up for the Jaguars. And Evan Neal is a really, really, really good player. Now, what does he need to do? He needs to play with more consistency. And not, that's not a knock on Evan Neal. We heard our own Scott Pioli talk about this earlier in the week prior to the championship game, he struggles at time with consistency, and, and that just happens with young players. And, and I've made this point before. Jedrick Wills was drafted a top five pick by the Browns a few years ago at Alabama. Alex Leatherwood was drafted in the middle of the first round last year by the Raiders. I think that Evan Neal falls between those two former Alabama players. Really good player. You draft him, you can play him right away. And if you're the Jaguars, you're thinking about it because you have to protect Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, you got to protect that quarterback. How about the top defensive players out there? What about a guy like Michigan's DN, Aiden Hutchinson? Obviously, did didn't end great for him, but do you think he's proved enough to show that he wasn't some one-year wonder? No, that's exactly right. He, he's not a one-year wonder. In fact, I went back and watched him uh, after the 2019 season when there was a little buzz about him. And I didn't get it. He came back to school during the COVID year, which didn't count for some players in terms of production. And this year he went absolutely bananas. And right, that last game against Georgia, it wasn't his best. I don't want to bring this up and say it too loud for our producer, Brian Tully, but if you flop, flop those games, the Georgia game and the Ohio State game, and the Ohio State game was just last two weeks ago, then we're talking about him as the best, best player on planet Earth. So I think you have to take the totality of his work and, and he has been an absolute stud. Did he have a down game? Yeah, he did. But guess what? Miles Garrett has down games. Uh, T.J. Watt has down games. But the, the, the majority of what they're able to do off the edge is very, very disruptive. And that feels a lot like Aiden Hutchinson. The Jaguars don't need him at number one. They've drafted off uh, edge rushers in two of the last three drafts. But he's still that good that you consider it. 14 sacks that senior season. College football playoff berth. Heisman Trophy runner-up. I mean... Got the accolades there, that's for sure. Now, could the first pick go to a highly touted prospect from Oregon? What about a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau? So tell me something, though, Ryan. Why did it seem like he occasionally took some plays off? I know that that's a big question out there. Yeah, and I don't know if it's a function of him taking plays off, quote-unquote. He was coming back from an ankle injury that he suffered in the Fresno State game early in the season. And sometimes guys you play against are pretty good. Also not helping, Aiden Hutchinson, as we just talked about, went off each and every snap. He was one of the few players that didn't take plays off, it felt like. But Thibodeau is a physical freak. Yeah, he's incredibly uh, well-respected among his teammates and coaches. And when he's on, he is just about unstoppable. You get some Chase Young vibes about the way he plays, not in terms of his size and, uh, and his, uh, his girth, if you will, 
but his ability and his quickness off the ball. And I think that he was overshadowed by the injury, which slowed him up a little bit. He missed a few games and overshadowed by the fact that Aiden Hutchinson, Aiden Hutchinson was so incredibly good. That said, if you told me that Kayvon Thibodeau went first overall or second overall, I would 100% believe you because that's how good he was over the course of his entire career. Yeah, that's ceiling massively high there. It seems like any O-lineman could benefit uh, from a player like Ikeem Ekwon. He's a physical blocker. He excels in the run game. Could you see him securing that number one spot? I actually like Ikeon a little bit better than Evan Neal. And I don't know even if that's blasphemous at this point. Early in the... In the college football season, there were conversations about maybe he has to kick inside to guard, and I, I talked to a few scouts about that, and they said, absolutely not. This man is a grown man on the outside, and you watch him play, and you're like, oh, my gosh, his nickname should be Dr. Pancake because he's taking these guys to town. I love his game. He's a little raw. That's okay. You can work with raw. All the physical skills in the world, you can work with raw, and he can continue to improve. Again, we're talking about the Jaguars. They need to protect Trevor Lawrence. So if you told me Aquanu or, or Neil were in the mix at number one, sign me up for that, and I'd imagine Trevor Lawrence would sign up for it as well. Yeah, one of the most dominant run-blocking tackles in the country this season. All right, before we let you go, i got to ask you about two more guys. People always want to focus on the quarterbacks in every draft class. Now, both these guys really need a red-hot pre-draft process to find their name to number one. we got guys like Matt Corral or, or Kenny Pickett. Any shot there? Sure, there's always a shot. It requires them to trade up, of course, because the Jaguars have Trevor Lawrence. Uh, here's the thing. I went back and looked. So in 2016, look, Jared Goff went first. Carson Wentz went second. Paxton Lynch went 26. Anything is possible. Uh, in uh, 2017, the year after that, Mr. Trubisky went number two overall. It's Kenny Pickett better than, than Mr. Trubisky? Is uh, Matt Corral better? Yeah, I think so. So it could happen, and it's just a matter of these teams falling in love over the next few months, a team desperate for a quarterback, whether it's Washington or even the Vikings, the Falcons, you name it, there's a team that could possibly be out there. If they want that quarterback bad enough, it could happen. Now, it would be bonkers, crazy, nuts, but look, we've seen bonkers, crazy, nuts things happen in recent drafts. So I'll, I'll put it at 5%, but uh, I'm not going to say uh, absolutely not. All right, if you could put all your money on the line right now and say who's going to go number one overall, who would you say? I love Matt Corral, but I, I think Kenny Pickett gives you – he's 24 years old. He has a little more experience, and I think that will be a selling point to some team, some owner perhaps like the Carolina Panthers, who want to fix things immediately. He doesn't have to wait around a year or two for this kid to get better. Malik Willis is another name from Liberty to keep an eye out on, but he's raw as well. So while I love Matt Corral, I'll go with Kenny Pickett. Thanks, Ryan. Always appreciate the insight there. If you're looking for more of your daily fix of NFL news and analysis, you've got to look no further than the Pick 6 podcast. Our guide getting you up to speed in about 30 minutes every day. The latest episode all about that NFL coaching vacancy, news and rumors. You've got to listen and tune in today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.